and welcome back to your soap making channel. Now today is going to be an interesting day. Everything that was not expected did happen. So this is maybe a video on expect the unexpected. And this batch of soap was really like a teenager. Just when I think it slammed the door into my face, it yanked it open again and just yelled another few words and slammed the door again. But I think we might have tamed it eventually in the end and off we go now this very eventful soap i already measured out all of my oils and i melted them beforehand i've measured out my citric acid into a container as well as some powdered sugar and i've got my uh, lye crystals as well the liquid amount that i'm using here is going to be a, a cool down tea made from calendula and chamomile it's got a very lovely soft sweet sun fragrance to it uh, that's actually not going through in soap it's very very sorry that that's not actually gonna pull through there but it does give a lovely soft yellow tinge to the soap as well so it's not all the way uh, a loss so yeah i'm just straining it into my citric acid and here I've got my powdered sugar and this is my light crystals that I measured out and then I've got a little bit of activated charcoal there. I want to reserve some of my um, batter and just add it to the activated charcoal and close it and seal it and to keep it as a little bit of a, a soap clay that I want to use on top of my soap. So you just need to glub up. I can't find my black gloves anywhere, so I'm using these disposables. I prefer to use something that is reusable. I try to decrease my plastic footprint in my soap making as much as possible. So I actually dislike the, the, the disposable plastic gloves, but I've had them for many years and they are lying in my drawer. So I might as well just use them at some stage. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding a little bit of uh, acoustic soda to my citric acid solution here. Yeah? I'm adding a little bit because the first part usually reacts quite violently and it makes a grumbling sound and so on. And then I add the rest of my citric acid, oh, my, my lye solution. And this is where it happened. I can't believe it, but there are many things that actually could have went wrong here. Now, luckily it was a voice hour because there would have been a lot of a blip, blip, blipity, blip, blip there in there. So, but let's just discuss on what happened here or maybe happened here or could have happened here and how to actually just sidestep the whole blinking thing that it never happens to you. The reason why I decided to do this as a voiceover in the first place was that um, I didn't really have a quiet time. There were people moving through the house um, all the time. The times that I could record that it was quiet, the electricity was off or something just happened. So I decided to record while there were a lot of, all, all my own people were, were at home at that moment, watching TV, chatting and so on. And um, with ADD, that is a distraction. So my liquid temperature could have been that it wasn't really cooled down. I made the tea a few hours earlier or I thought it was an hour or so earlier. So in my head, it was already at room temperature. I did not measure it in front um, ahead of time. I did not touch my cont uh, container to feel if it's cool. So my liquid temperature might have been a little bit to the high side or maybe it was room temperature but I did not pay attention to that. The second thing was I was stirring my citric acid um, but I can't remember with hindsight if every last little crystal of citric, citric acid was actually dissolved. So I am not 100% sure of that. So um, the other thing was I added my lye too fast as it was heating up quite a lot because the water amount was less um, there was already double the citric acid now remember citric acid is an acid and your lye is an alkali now it's very much the same as when um, we were children we made these volcanoes using um, bicarb and um, vinegar so the moment that you add the two together now this is the same thing you get this volcano effect um, it's just a 
chemical reaction and it starts to boil up and over. So if you add a little bit of um, light to your citric acid solution, um, it makes a little bit of a grumbling sound, but nothing major, nothing spectacular. And then eventually, if you, uh, it, it neutralizes the little bit of extra acid in there, the citric acid, and then it is like you're adding light to water. But I think I, I've added it too fast. So that might have been the other thing that happened then. So that to that. I never give up, so I just cleaned up my whole thing and I start it again. Now this is exactly the same recipe. It is the same um, volumes, same everything. But the main thing is, this time I was paying attention. <laughs> so that actually does help. So let's go on from here on. So I've already measured everything out again. I've got my citric acid here. Same amount, this time the tea is definitely, definitely cooled. I've got my thermometer and it is only 26 degrees Celsius, which is awesome. That is basically room temperature here where I live. Just had to put my finger in there just to make 100% sure. Um, I think I'm a little bit paranoid <laughs> at this stage. So again, just straining all of my tea into my... Um, citric acid container and I've added a tiny little bit of water extra I think it was about 25 milliliters of water extra just to make sure that the one-on-one -on -one, because that's another thing as I strain this some of the liquid actually stays behind inside the herbs not every single drop actually went into this container so with a one-to-one -one, some of it might have been stayed back in my glass container so I just made sure to add a little bit more to make sure that there is enough liquid for every single um, lye, crystal, lye molecule to, to be able to, to dissolve in this liquid that I've got here and now I'm stirring and I'm making 100% sure there's a tiny little citric acid blob there breaking it up and stirring it until it is 100% dissolved so you see, I'm paying attention this time. This time I'm checking everything and every step. So again, just gonna glove up. Now I must say, the upside of the disposable gloves were, I could clean everything up and I just pulled it into itself and threw them in a dustbin after I cleaned up this whole acoustic mess that I made with the first round. So I didn't need to try to rinse it off or anything. And it actually kept everything out of my, off of my skin, so it worked quite well. So now this time, tiny little bit of light crystals. Super, super cautious, you see? <laughs> and I'm stirring it. And I'm stirring to make double, 100% sure that all of the lye is dissolved before I add another little bit. So the color of the tea is not changing yet. And just keep stirring there. Double checking the temperature, it's 44 degrees Celsius, so it actually went up quite a bit already. And adding more of my lice crystals there. Also, again, this time, just a tiny little bit. So this is actually going now much slower. And it's going to take much longer. But, um, yeah, I've used citric acid in soaps many, many, many times. Because I do live in a hot water area. Here you can see the tea is darkening. So the temperature is rising quite a lot now. But um, back to the citric acid, usually I only use 1% citric acid in my subs and um, this is a new thing for me and I actually changed I think just too many things in the same recipe at once. So I've got we are at the 64 degrees Celsius already so it's another 20 degrees that it actually increased. So I've added a little bit, little bit more here. I actually, there was a piece of the video that was cut out. You can see there's a little bit steam forming on top of the, the glass solution. So I decided to just put it in a bowl and pour some cold water in a bowl and make a little bit of a, a cooling bath just to make sure that it's not gonna 
overheat and I actually a, a, a piece of the video got cut out where I added more of the citric acid because from here on there are a few there were a few more additions, little, little, little. So just remember, add a little bit at a time. At this stage, it's 75 degrees Celsius. Everything is added, and I'm just going to remove the bowl here. So, yeah, and you should think by now it is smooth sailing. The lye is dissolved, it's still in the bowl. Everything is nice and going slowly and perfectly and not. <laughs> So there's a few surprises more yet to come. This was just literally the freaking wool batch of soap out of hell. I don't know. Although that's maybe a little bit of a, uh, a bit too dramatic. Um, it did come out very nicely. Now here's another piece that I accidentally cut out. I added the powdered sugar afterwards and then it started to make like a syrup. So yeah, I'm just starting to, to, to try to stir it out. Uh, the sugar syrup just clumped to the spoon a bit. My patience was running low and I just decided I'm going to take a strainer and I'm going to pour my light solution into my oils and just keep anything that is not dissolved out of my stuff and just carry on. So uh, maybe a good thing would have been here to wait until my light solution was much cooler as well. But that's also hindsight. At that moment, I thought mm, we hunky dory, just let go, skip the sugar in the process. Most of it was dissolved anyway. There was a tiny little bit on the spoon, but we're good to go. Now, what I decided here is I wanted to split my batter into two because I wanted to make yellow and I wanted to make a lightly lighter color. So I'm going to put some uh, yellow mica to one half and I wanted to put titanium dioxide to the other half. Now here I started just to stir things through and make sure everything mix a little bit. I want to just stick blend it until it comes to trace. And the stick blender here is still working perfectly behaving 100% like every other day before okay just splitting the batter into two halves because I want to do the two colors here now here I'm paused way paused properly measuring and writing things down or whatever this is just eyeballing and adding and yeah this this is just a it was an interesting batch it was a really interesting batch that's all that I can tell you guys and this is real soaping hey um, usually we see videos and everything is going smoothly and 100% and nothing goes wrong and when we start making soap and we try it ourselves and we run into some problems and challenges and so on, then we think, oh my goodness, there's something wrong. I can't make soap. Trust me, all soap makers make a mess. This is now at least 12 years of soaping and more. I can't really remember which year I made my first bar of soap because I'm, I made a few my first soap was horrible oh my goodness you could have killed somebody with that thing so I just decided you know what I can't make soap so I, I, I think I made three batches and I skipped it for that was before Google there was not lots of information out there here I'm just going to add some titanium dioxide I just want to lighten the other half as well I really want to, a little bit of a nice contrast between the and the as well this is another thing always dissolve your titanium dioxide in either oil or water depending if it's oil dispersible or water dispersible I didn't have anything that was um, dissolved in water anymore so I just added directly to my batter that was another mistake so I learned from my mistakes and here is where the non-fun starts for some reason the stick blender doesn't want to work it doesn't connect properly it doesn't and it just slips off so I believe with the last part 
what have happened there is I think a tiny little bit of plastic um, of this twisty port where it's supposed to connect together broke off and I didn't realize it and I thought okay and you can see my battery here is already at quite a thick trace it is literally like in not even thick custard anymore we are going for pudding now and I'm still very optimistic I'm gonna get this blender to work and try to push it in the next one and just keep going and keep trying so and I realized this is thick If you stir um, your batter that is already a thick trace, sometimes you can loosen them up a little bit. Um, and my fragrance oils, uh, this was actually an essential oil blend. It was not a fragrance oil, so, and there was enough of floral in there. So I thought, okay, just add it. It should maybe loosen it up a bit. And it did for, for a second. Can you see there, it, it looks a little bit smoother. But it's like magic thickening stuff because the next moment everything is really really thick now normally i would have stick blended um, my lighter one especially with the titanium dioxide because if I, you do not dissolve it beforehand there is going to be small tiny little lumps in here so i'm just gonna Fast forward from here, I'm just scooping um, one color, then the other color. Try to, to, to swirl it a little bit. Um, try to texture it on top of the, 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 the soap. So this from here on to the end is just me struggling to submit soap that will not submit. So yeah, but it was still soap. So I will show you the care cut, what happened because my stuff weren't properly um, blended through. I did get some uh, titanium dioxide spots in my soap and then I can sort of show you how it looks like, how you can, can discern between is it a steric acid spot, is it a bubble, is this titanium dioxide that was undissolved and so on. So let's see you again at the cut. Okay, so we are here the next day. We are cutting the soap here, unmolding it. It does smell lovely. Um, it's set up quite nicely. It um, sort of went through a gel. I'm just going to fast forward here because I really do think you know by now how I unmold my stuff. cut now here is where the very first spot of titanium dioxide is showing now this is how you see if you rub over it it will make white stripes all over your stuff and the rest of them look the same so the takeaway from this whole process on this specific batch of soap is if you change your recipe expect the unexpected because something is going to happen along the line. Okay, something is not really going to happen all the, all the time, but it might happen. So um, that's one of the things. Pay attention to what you do. So um, if you are soaping, make sure that you are not distracted like I was. Um, distraction, I think, was mainly, and, and, and I'm one of those people that really very easily get distracted. So if you know that 
you've got issues with paying attention to stuff, then make sure that everything is fine here. And then with your citric acid, make sure that you are working very slowly, adding tiny little bits of um, uh, uh, your light crystals to your, your solution there. Work slowly, make sure that everything stays cool or to the coolest side, that it does not overheat. Um, if you are using citric acid in your soap, make sure that you are using a container that is large enough that should it actually boil up, that it will stay in the container or you can use a double thing um, like I've used with my little bucket and I've put it into a, another larger container the second time um, so that if it spills over then it's it's contained into a second container as well but normally if you use normal temperature then there shouldn't be any problems there um, if you work slowly patiently then everything should work out 100% fine. So, yeah, so I'm going to show you in the next video what I'm going to do with my little black soap clay. And see you guys and, and happy soaping until next time.